My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at selectquote.com slash commercials. Welcome to the Awakening Women podcast. I'm your host, Leanne Oten, and former therapist with a background in counseling psychology. This podcast is for strong, high-achieving women who want more in their lives and relationships, who are ready to rise to the next level of growth, healing, and evolution. Nothing changes until you change. And when you change, everything else changes around you as a result. If you're done with feeling powerless within the chaotic and toxic dynamics in your relationship, relationship and don't even know where to begin with making changes, I've got you covered. I know you've tried everything, including counseling, watching hours of videos and reading stacks of books on narcissism and find that all it does is leave you feeling even more stuck and in the same place. None of these things work when you're living with a narcissistic spouse because the root causes of the symptoms are not being addressed. As with physical health, there is an emotional, physical, spiritual, and psychological component to healing and overcoming the problematic symptoms and pain you're facing every day in your life and relationship. If you're ready for a direct, no fluff, no nonsense approach to take you into your personal power and take back your life, you are in the right place. Let's get started with today's episode. What comes up for you after you leave the relationship is your healing work. So I have been working with women who are in that first year-ish after leaving Usually it's in the first few months where you are experiencing the emotional aftershock, a lot of mixed emotions. Are you ready to take action on your separation and divorce? Your Empowered Divorce Coaching is for successful career and entrepreneurial women who are ready to take action toward freeing themselves from the grip of toxic narcissistic abuse. Or for those who have recently left and are still struggling to break free from the continued manipulation and control of their ex. If you're struggling with how to parent with your ex or don't know how to cut things off so you can finally heal, apply to become a client of my therapeutic coaching program. It starts with a free 15 minute chat so I can get an idea of where you're at, where you're making mistakes, and to determine how I can best support you to move forward. To book that 15 minute call, head to the link in the show notes. Back to the episode. A lot of things going, just feeling really, really confusing and intense. You could be experiencing intense guilt for leaving the relationship, questioning if you did the right thing, feeling bad for them because they're so good at playing the victim and making you the villain. Um, And so you have a lot of healing work to do after you leave, probably even more so than you have done in the relationship because it's really hard to actually be able to know what your healing work is when you're in that constant chaos and in the constant turmoil. And so what I do with women on the other side, it actually is quite beautiful to do the work on the other side because they're more receptive and able to actually do that healing work, that deeper emotional work to see the connections, to see the common threads, to have those breakthroughs and make those um, paradigm shifts of where they once were in the relationship and where they are now and what they can leave behind and what they don't have to, to continue to subscribe to or believe or think or do. And so this is where you get to really deepen into your own healing work is on the other side. So the things that come up for you when you've left are your healing work. They have been your healing work and they're really not anything to do about with them. Yes, they play a part in your story. They've brought all of your wounds to the surface, but they're just a person that kind of came in and have, have come out, right? You have to do the work on the other side of that. And it is grieving and it is guilt and it is sadness and it's doubt and it's fear and it's all the things. But remember that the wounds were there before you even met him or met anyone that you've been in a relationship. Your wounds have been with you since you were a kid or a teenager. It's not about him. So we have to stop making it about that. That's the first thing is detaching and remembering that he merely brought your wounds to the light through 
how he treated you. Every time he degraded you, the pain that came up needs healing. Every time he lied to you or betrayed you, the pain that has come up needs healing. Every time he guilted you and villainized you and made you the problem, your wound that came through is what needs to heal. When he twisted your reality and made you feel like you're losing your mind, that is a wound that you need to heal. Every time he dismissed your feelings and steamrolled your needs, that is a wound that you need to heal. If you don't heal these wounds, and you leave, you run the risk, a high risk of getting into another relationship, maybe a different face. You think it's a different person, but you will still have those same things going on, those same feelings being brought up and those same behaviors coming to light. So this is how you know the wound is still there. And this is true in when you're in the relationship, you can't seem to get out. Like you feel like you're in this web and you can't even take that first step. That is because your wounds are keeping you there and we don't, we can't see it when we're in it. We only see it when we come out of it and those and doing that healing work that those things come to light. So remember that the chaos trauma in the relationship that you've left or you're still in is a reenactment of your past. It's repetition compulsion quite often, and it is wanting to resolve the past through the present. And we're trying to get those needs met in a relationship. We should never do that by the way. Um, especially if it's a toxic one. doesn't mean you can't get any healing needs met in a relationship. Actually, you should. But not to rely on a a relationship to be everything for you. You need to have your own fullness, have your own life, have your own wholeness, have your own wellness practices, have your own other relationships, a career, a business, creativity, whatever it is that, that keeps you whole. You need to have that regardless. And what I see with so many women, not all women, because some women um, definitely were maintaining their careers and their businesses and were successful in that, especially the women I work with, very successful in their careers. I've worked with many different types of um, entrepreneurial women and career women as far as doctors and um, biologists and nurses and those just in the medical field. And they all have that side to them where they've kept their career going, even though it's been like really brutal to try and do that while they're in one of these relationships. Let me tell you, it's very difficult to have a life balance when you're, you're doing that and you're dealing with that and you have kids on top of that. It's very, very, very draining and will make you sick eventually. And so remember that whatever's going on now is a mirror for what's going on inside of you, the healing work you need to do. And remember that rescuing him was, I was talking about like I've been talking about is rescue addiction is rescuing him has become your addiction, your drug of choice. You're trying to make him into something that you never had. This is a trauma response. It's traumatic to do this where you are, you know, this person is, is a representation of someone from your past, typically a parent for women. Typically it's the father, father figure where this relationship is bringing up all those wounds and you're trying to get this person to change so that they can be what you needed and didn't have. But you're doing it with the wrong person, right? It's That's when you know that you have some deep healing work to do. When you're trying to change a person, a partner especially, into someone that will not hurt you, that will treat you well, that will give you respect, that will not abuse you, that will honor you and cherish you and protect you, you're trying to turn a frog into a horse. Like it's, (laughs) I mean, that just came to mind, right? But that's truly what it is. And it's that exhausting. It's impossible. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't change someone else. All you can do is know what your needs are, your deal breakers, boundaries, non-negotiables, the things that you know you can no longer live with. And if those things continue to happen, after repeated, I mean repeated over years, you know, this is, we shouldn't be letting it go on for years. Um, but we, we just get so caught up in it. We don't see another way out. So we keep trying to give another chance and give another chance and give another chance. But if we knew this early on and we knew what to look for early on, this is why I love doing coaching with women who are dating or getting into the dating realm is because I love coaching on this. Like, how do you know when something is going to maybe go well or not in that first six months because women get way too wrapped up in things way too quickly um that's another another subject I'm going to be talking more about that in a coming episode I'm just rambling going off topic 
So remember that rescuing him has become your addiction. It's your drug of choice. It's distracting you from what you need to do mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and career-wise that you need to focus on and the feelings that you are avoiding by focusing and fixating and hyper-obsessing over him, his changes, what he's doing, what he's not doing. It's it's completely abandoning yourself for a man. It's It's giving up all of who you are to make him the center of your world. And this is a mistake that we make. We cannot make any partner the center of our world. We need to have lots of other things going for us. And the relationship is like the cherry on top of an amazing dairy-free, gluten-free cake. (laughs) So you have to realize that it's your work. It's not you're focusing on what, what he is doing and what he's not doing. So if you're in the relationship, this applies. If you're out of the relationship, this applies because you might be in the aftermath and in just a world of pain and you don't even know how to see your way out. You just know that you feel like something is dying or you're broken, like something is broken inside of you. And those moments are really difficult to go through and it can feel like you're on your own. Like it doesn't make any sense why you're feeling the way you are on the other side. When you finally got out, you're away. It's what you wanted. Um, But so much can come up on the other side because the relationship was traumatic. It wasn't just a normal relationship and a normal breakup. There was no closure. There was no ending it with respect and love. It was likely ended in a not very nice way. And you go into being treated like you're the enemy number one, that you are the reason everything is the way it is. And that is hard to take on top of a breakup to have the other person continue to not take any ownership or accountability. And they won't. They never, ever will. They never did, so why would they now? All right, so wrapping up, what remains when you leave is the residue. It's your work to do. That is your healing work. It's very hard to see what your healing work is when you're in the chaos, confusion, and the crazy-making cycles and the crazy-making patterns and the conflict. You can't see what your wounds are because you're just distracted by what's going on in this relationship. So in order to truly heal, you need to get out to do that healing work. But obviously you need to do something while you're in it to break yourself out of the patterns and be able to actually take those steps to moving out of the relationship. That's what I want for everyone. I don't want any woman to feel like she has to struggle and get strong and be able to tolerate more and more and more abuse and mistreatment. It's a really exhausting place to be, and I really don't want that for anyone. And so just remember that you cannot see your way through the darkness of this without some kind of a a North Star or a a way forward, uh, something, something to pull you out. You need to have other things going for you. And that's even if you're in the relationship. So if you're in the relationship in order to start, that's where you start. What do you need to do? Do you need to work with a coach? Do you want to work with me? Check the link in the show notes for that. If you need to focus on your health, what do you need to focus on? What's going on there? Where have you neglected that? What about your kids and other relationships? So please look at your overall, you know, the overall balance of all areas of your life. So I kind of went off on a different subject there, but the moral of the story and the point that I started with with this episode is, and this came to me the other day after working with a, um, getting off a client session is, what comes up after you leave is your healing work. All right, take care. Thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of the Awakening Women podcast. If you love this episode, please take a moment to share it and leave a five-star rating and review. If you're ready to take your next step, head to the link in the show notes to sign up for my latest free class. Also, be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Awakening Women Official and join the conversation. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again in the next episode. Take care of yourself in the meantime and I'll see you online. Pulling up to Mickey D's just for drinks? Oh yeah, that's me. Nothing extra, just perfection and a straw. Coming in hot for the coldest cups on the block. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. 
Mix things up with any size lemonade or sweet tea for $1.49. Perfect with our classic fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba.